uh, as I was saying, what the uh, wing controllers do, so you can either, don't use those, okay, which would go usually to your wind turbine, you can just use these as dump loads if you want. So, 60 volts, right, and you just put the two sensing cables on that way, so you connect that to your battery bank. And then what will happen is it will sense it and then it can dump it. So this is for a 600 watt, 48 volt, right, system. So in other words, anything above 60 volts, it will do the equivalent of start dump loading it. And it's like a basically a giant heat sink. Okay, so you don't need to use the uh, bridge rectifier inside for the wind turbine. Or the alternative is you then do one, two, three, connect them to your turbines and then that to the battery. And then it can do the whole thing all in one hit. It's entirely up to you. Um, longevity, I'd like to see what these are like and hence the reason why we've also got one wired up here. If it, it proves that after a year or something it fails, then we're going to go back to the the big block uh, bridge rectifiers. Hmm? Uh, yeah. Yes, look at that. You know, no offence, I mean... Mm. Anyway, but we'll see. We'll run it for a year, see what happens. But if not, then that is effectively the same thing that's inside one of those, um, except this has, like, uh, film resistors uh, to burn the heat off, basically, if it goes over 60 volts, which is probably never going to happen. Um, yeah, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um... Anything else? Uh, network points, network points. Nothing interesting very much there. Ah, right. So one of the things is Home Assistant. Oh, God. So a few people were saying, well, how do, you, how do you monitor, like, the wind turbine? Okay? Um, because, I mean, quite frankly, I've had a look around for the wind turbine... Um, measuring real time via both internet and local area network there really isn't anything out there alternatives or or otherwise right so um this is actually what kind of first started um how to get everything integrated and then use the energy more useful than than what it's used for so you can see you can either go down this room you have a hardwired system that's no bloody good if i'm not in the house at the time see so, but it will do the same thing, 16.2, 15, 16, oh, there you go, it's just changing, a bit of a delay. So, you you can see on bottom left graft is wind turbine in power in watts, on the right is, uh, on the bottom is um, uh, voltage, yeah? Because it will produce voltage so long it's spinning, but it may not be enough to overcome um, effectively the battery, right? So. Uh, where are we going? So we have uh, USB power, it's power only. That goes down to there. If I can get any closer, there we go. And to some fly leads. So one, two, three, four. So you've got ground and then B, A, and plus five volt, right? Okay, so again, nothing exciting. Trying to get down to the little module, which we're 3D printing a case, but we haven't got around to fitting it yet. Okay, so then you need to transfer it. I can never remember which one. I think it's RS-485 to TTL transmission. So RS-485 to TTL transmission. Um, and these are like, I don't know, uh, pound 50, something like that. It is ridiculously cheap, okay? And then that goes through, ooh, if I can get to it, to this, which is, okay, it's a 3D printed cover, so I don't really care about that, but the bit inside of it is an ESP2866 uh, chip, and you just have a USB there for power. And that then takes the information from a piece fair, um, 017. Oh, 19? Uh, you'll have to look at which one. Uh, basically DC. So DC from the DC, which is the wind shunt there, goes, connects up here, and then has the voltage and watts, what hours and all the rest of it. And then uh, basically the ESP2866 and the RS485 thing and all the rest of it, that is strictly for communications. So um, 
you need Home Assistant running, then you need to get used to using something called a package called ESP Home, which is built into the Home Assistant. Um, and then you can just write some lines of code um, or download it. It's very, very simple. Uh, most of it's already there, ready to be downloaded. Flash it to the ESP2866, and then it will start talking on your own Wi-Fi network. That's it. It's that simple. It's not that difficult. A um, little bit frustrating right at the very beginning, but once you've got one, um, you can figure them all out um, because they're all more or less the same. So it is those piece fairs and then into that, and then from there you've got a home assistant, and a home assistant will work anywhere and everywhere with uh, internet and local area network connections. So, you know, it's great news. Same thing, uh, blocking diodes. Um, so you can buy, like, inline. Uh, that's like an inline one for solar. Uh, but a blocking diode is a blocking diode. Just make sure you've got one that can handle the, the amps. Um, and that just stops it also then from the power back feeding because or otherwise up here, uh, 1.8 volts. If you didn't have the blocking diode, it's not a massive problem. But I want to know what the wind turbine's producing. Yeah. So, I mean, even on a, on a blocking diode, you're still going to have some bleed coming back. And that's what you're seeing, 1.8 volts. So it'll never get to zero because of the blocking diode. Uh, but if the blocking diode wasn't there, all it will be reading is the battery voltage. Yeah. Does that make sense? Um, so it, 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 this way, when it starts producing, as the wind picks up, you can start to see the voltage will start to increase, um, and then it will just get to the point where it meets the battery, you know, say like there, so that will come all the way out at 51.8, and then it will start producing watts, because it's effectively free spinning up to that point. Um, you know, and you can kind of see it here, I mean, we've literally had no wind, um, you know, and even here, so it's still having to get a 50 you know, 55 or whatever during there just to produce this teeny tiny little spike. But as I said, there is literally unmeasurable wind. Um, yeah, so I think at some point I'm going to have to do a video on how we do all the ESP2866 and program them for switch controls, uh, measurements and stuff like that. So we have a, a similar one all the way down here as well. That's an ESP2866. And then it goes actually into this box for measuring the hot water cylinder um, power. So when ooh, when the hot water turns on and off, uh, let's have a look if I can do this. Again, as I said, not the fastest system, but eh, it's okay. So if I can zoom in a little bit. So, you know, this is the kind of thing that you, you end up getting left with, yeah? And um, what you want to basically do is just go, right, I want the hot water on. So let's click that and see if anything will happen. Oh, no, that's just telling me um, when was the last time it was last activated. So let's go out ah, here. Yeah. So we'll go for the script. Um, that'll do like an hour and a half of hot water. If there's no problems. Yeah, I bet you we're going to have problems. See if we can do it another way. As I said, we haven't finished building the uh, Home Assistant scripting just yet. There you go. So we'll just trip it on a manual through Home Assistant. There you go. So you're monitoring it. There you go. Yeah. So that way we know how much is going in, how many watt hours. Um, yeah, basically all, all the stuff that you really want to know what's going on and how you can use that load. So you would use that, write a small script, and then tell it to when the conditions are X, Y, and Z, then turn it on or turn it off. And then you want to also, you know, water, heat, voltage, frequency, yeah, daily consumption, all these kind of things that you'd like to know. Um, and that's basically it. Yeah. There you go. And we turn it off. And it'll die down again. There you go. So, you know, and then, so once you've got it automated, um, you know, there's a lot, lot more you can do, um, you know, and use that energy in the most useful way possible, okay? Um, but I think I'm going to have to sit down and, and grab some ESP boards and stuff out of um, stores and, and just build it up and run through effectively. Um, it's probably going to be the best way. So, um, but yeah, um, any, any comments, uh, let me know. Um, there's going to be a lot here <laughs> to, 
to to take in because again it's a completely different system we've we looked at the smas and this is now looking at uh, volticon um but have a look at the pricing index you'll see what i mean so these are like two five kilowatts i mean so i think very roughly hmm, and we'll exclude the price of labor we'll just assume it's free so yeah, those two together with you need a parallel card so they can talk with each other and then distribute the power. Okay, so they are hybrid inverters. So they together cost uh, with the parallel cards, I think, um, seventeen hundred quid, something like that, thereabouts. That was a couple of years ago now. So seventeen hundred quid uh what did we say uh under a couple of grand for 24 kilowatts and another um i think about 800 quid is what we got for the say that pack of bmw batteries up there um rest of it is really wiring as a 35 pound computer the acer uh bms was uh, about probably 250 300 quid something like that um you know you you can start to work it out where effectively your 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 roi for this whole system is probably going to be um three to five years if not less um well the way energy is going uh, it won't surprise me it's going towards a, a pound per kilowatt hour so but then this way it's doing now the hot water it's doing storage at night um it's doing solar during the day and there's electric heaters and everything else panel heaters that are going in 